Hey guys, welcome to Ham Radio with K0PIR on my YouTube channel. I've got the ICOM 7610 and the ICOM 7300 running two instances of WSJTX. And hey, if you haven't already, click on that subscribe button below. And if you want to be notified when I put out a new video, ring that bell. Okay, well, let's take a look at... Let me turn that down. Let's take a look at the desktop. And on my website, www.k0pir.us, I have an article out. And this video will help with that article. But I've got three icons here. And normally you have the WSJTX icon. And all you have to do is right click on it and then select create shortcut. So that creates another shortcut. Right click on it. And then uh, create shortcut. And that makes another shortcut. You want to go in and we're going to rename these. And then put the uh, path into it for the individual radios. And I'll show you what that looks like. Let me go ahead and get rid of these. Okay. So what I have on my desktop are two icons going to WSJTX. I'm going to right click on this one and go down to properties. This is for the ICOM 7300. And basically at the target on the shortcut tab, the target, you just have to enter this last part. And if you have a look at my website, the article on it, it will give a, a little bit more detail on it. And then on the general tab, all you have to do is rename the shortcut and click OK. Then the same thing on your second radio. Go down to properties. On the shortcut tab, you want to enter in just that last part, the rig dash name equals in your radio. And then go over to the general and rename that to that radio. So I have two icons, and then I have uh, WSJTX JT Alert X, JT Alert basically, and I didn't do anything with it. I didn't do anything special with it. So uh, let me show you how I start these up. I'm going to start up the ICOM 7610 first, and it is on 20 meters. It's connected to a two-element tri-bander up about 25 feet. So let me go ahead and start it, and it'll connect. The first time you do it, it you know it may not connect, and that's because you don't have the the settings set up already. So I, I do, and it's going to go ahead and connect. And I'm going to go in and show you what the settings look like on the general tab. You know to set up this your call sign grid. I'm going to assume that you've been using WSJTX for a while. The important tabs are the radio tab, and I'm using a uh, USB cable going to my 7610, and for the rig, I'm using the 7610. I know what COM port that is. It's COM4, and I do have a uh, device manager if you don't know where that is just type in device manager it'll pop up and we can take a look there I know uh, just from past experience COM4 is my 7610 and COM10 is my uh, ICOM 7300 then under the audio inputs and outputs we'll have four of them two mics and two speakers and I have renamed mine, but yours will say USB audio codec, and you'll just have to uh, figure out which is which is which. And then you can uh, custom name them uh, later on if you want. But it's easy enough to figure out. Just unplug the cable and see which ones disappear. Uh, okay, back to this. The radio tab, um, COM4, 115.2, and y'all know this. Uh, cat on the 7610 I'm using the rig for split operation it works really good and then data packet over here for the mode then on the audio tab 
I've selected the input and output and yours will say USB audio codec and then on the reporting tab um, this one I think is the default 2237 I have PSK reporter enabled that's not important but I like having it enabled and then the UDP server uh, 2237 I have all these checked off and that that's for the benefit of JT alert okay uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click OK there now I can start the uh, I'm gonna start one instance of uh, JT alert and get it going and show you what it looks like there it is the top left you'll see it will start here and show that it's on 20 meters and it's number one 20 meters number one and I have HRD my HRD logbook it's already open I have JT alert set to log into HRD logbook I don't have the radio connected with HRD logbook. That's important. You don't want to have uh, HRD rig control connected or you'll, you'll mess things up. Okay, so the 7610 is ready to go. Uh, let's go over and start the 7300. And we'll go over to File and Settings. And you know all this here on the general tab, radio tab, rig Zycom 7300. That's my uh, COM 10 for the 7300. And you know all of this. On split operation, I'm using fake it. It just seems to work better on the 7300. Then on the audio tab, I've got my USB audio codec for input and output. And then finally on the reporting tab, this UDP server port number, I increased it as 2238. Same settings as the other one, but that port number is different, 2238. And that's for JT Alert. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and start up another instance of JT Alert. And you'll see here it recognizes 40 meters and number 2. So I can move that up and I've got signals uh, it's going to start populating here on both of these I'm going to go ahead and close these windows and let me show you on the sound I'll show you how I renamed mine uh, I'm using Windows 10 I'm going to click on it and you'll see this is my speaker output if I were to go and and start watching a YouTube video or streaming something online I'd be able to hear it I'm going to right click on that speaker icon and then go to sounds and it brings up the sound window on the uh, the playback uh, that's the speakers and this is what I've, I've named custom named uh, the icon 7610 and to custom name it just double click on it and on the general tab just put in what radio it is click OK and then the 7300 same deal double click on it put in the name of the radio so when I go into file and settings and the audio tab I can tell them apart but like I said you'll have to figure that out on your own first and I just do it by unplugging the cable I plug in the, the 7610 and leave the 7300 unplugged. I recognize the USB audio codecs and then I just go into the sound and rename the title of it, the name of it. Okay, well, I got some activity here on 20 and 40. Uh, I have been using this. I can transmit simultaneously or I can sit here and just watch and, and search for DX and uh, I can if I see something see something on 40 meters that I want to 
uh, see somebody there that I want to make a contact with. I'm using JT Alert. I'm just adjusting the power output on my radios. I run about 25 watts. If I see somebody on, uh, yeah, if I see somebody on 40 meters, maybe Utah, I'll go ahead and give him a try. When I'm transmitting on 40, it doesn't really interfere too much with the 20 meters. Um, my inverted V is right below, about 5 feet below my 2 element beam. But it doesn't interfere too much. I can still receive while I'm transmitting on 40. And vice versa, if I'm transmitting on 20, I'm still able to receive on 40. Uh, when I'm transmitting on 20, it doesn't interfere with the 40 meter radio uh, that much. The, the only way that I can really tell is if I bring up the uh, the spectrum scope on the radio, and then I'll, I'll see a little interference. So I am able to make a contact on 40, and I'm running about 25 watts, actually about 30 watts right now. I didn't bump it down enough. And he gave me a really good signal report. I should bump it down probably 10 watts. Make it 20. Maybe propagation is pretty good right now. And I was calling CQ yesterday i did another video you can see it on youtube uh operating and transmitting at the same time uh i had hold transmit frequency checked off because i was calling cq and you can see down here i am transmitting in a, a pretty uh clear spot and i did make the contact so i'm going to put in 30 watts and uh, the 7300 and I click retain and it holds that and I click OK it logs to HRD logbook and if I pull up HRD logbook that last contact here I can double click on it and I'll show you it it tells me what radio I was using I could put in a better description uh, than that, but I could put in two instances of WSJTX 7300 transceiver. But anyway, Sandy, Utah, I know that place. So that's it for running two instances of WSJTX. Like I said, I've got another video out and I'm transmitting at the same time. Uh, boy, it really kept me busy. I was calling CQ. And I could do that for probably about 15, 15 minutes or 30 minutes. And then uh, it gets awful tiring. But sitting here looking for uh, DX stations on either bands, uh, that's a lot of fun. I can do that. And uh, it, it is interesting. So if you're interested in doing this, take a look at my website, www.k0pir.us. And if you have any questions or comments, please make them below. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Also, tell your friends. 73 and good DX.